All hail the flatty, y'all. Apex Tactical Flat Faced Trigger with Forward Set Sear Kit. Damn, it's good. <laughs> so, when Randy Lee from Apex Tactical set out to develop this trigger system, the goal was to eke out a 1911 trigger out of a gun that arguably did not have that great of a trigger, and that was the original M&P 9, the 1.0 as we have come to call them. The triggers in these were not great. The barrels weren't that great either. <laughs> Which makes you wonder, well, why did anybody like them? At the time these came out, the ergonomics were second to none. Now, since then, uh, HK uh, P30, VP9s, uh, the Walther, PPQs, and all those guns have come out that are actually like made for human hands. <laughs> but back when this came out, it was like the Glock or this, uh, with a few other exceptions. But it was the feel, the way it felt in your hands was like, oh my God, that's good. And it's a Smith & Wesson. It was made in America. So it had a lot going for it. It just had some like major issues. Now the 2.0 fixed a lot of those issues. So just right out of the box, 2.0s are just an inherently better gun than a 1.0. However, I am a big fan of the old beaver tail on the 1.0. Plus I already had this one. So rather than update and get a 2.0, I just kept piling on Apex shit onto this gun. So at the time that I did the duty carry sear kit, the hardened sear duty carry kit, that was all that was available. Like this is 2011 or something, maybe late 2010. So it had the original hinged trigger and I put in that kit. Then they came out with uh, this. Then they came out with the curved shoe kit. Well, I'd already dropped the money into the this the duty carry kit, so I just put the curved shoe on it. Ended up costing about the same as what this kit, the forward set sear with the flat face trigger, the flatty, ended up costing about the same, but I could never justify spending that money again to put a flatty in it. But nearly 10 years later, I was like, you know what? I really want the flatty. Damn it, let's just do this because gun channel, right? <laughs> so, so here we are. I ponied up, dropped the coin, and damn, I'm glad I did. It is so good. So good. So rather than try to show you this way, what I did is I just, before I did the changeover, I sat and filmed the curved trigger with the duty carry kit and then filmed this one up close, tried to kind of keep it same, same. So let's take a look at the before and then the after. I'm gonna let these run kind of long so that you can really kind of get a sense and then I'll meet you back here in a second. All right, so hopefully that conveys the difference. It was good before, like it was light years better than the factory trigger, and it was a good trigger. Uh, I'm four and a half, five pounds, something. Little bit of creep, like once you hit the wall, a little bit of mush, a little bit of pre-travel, but it was a good trigger. This is crazy good. Like, damn. I put the heavier, it comes with two trigger springs and I put the heavier spring because I do want to be able to carry it. 
I'm not going for like competition lightness. That's supposed to be the difference between kind of a three pound trigger pull and like four and a half pound. So I wanted the heavier pull. Might change it out down the road, but probably not. This is still plenty light. My dry, my dry fires are like nuts. I mean, the gun is not moving. Ran it through the Mantis a whole bunch of times. Scores instantly jumped up from the previous trigger, so I'm happy about that. I'll have a video on that later in the week. You know, really just beat this thing to death. <laughs> uh, it's damn good, y'all. If you have an original or a 2.0 with original you know, factory triggers in them, this upgrade is well, well worth it. It is a pain in the ass to do the install. Like, damn. Uh, <laughs> for y'all M&P nerds, uh, so I already had the, the improved striker block kit, the ultimate striker block kit, which goes into the slide, and you have to remove the rear sight to get it in. And the flatty has a whole different striker block. So I had to do that, uh, as well as changing over. So, I mean, everything had to come out. It was a giant pain in the ass, uh, but well worth the juice was well worth the squeeze. So now what I have is the trigger I'm happy with, got the light I'm happy with, got the holster, got the SLS working. I got my belt mostly almost totally put together. So I'm almost ready for my training coming up here in about a month, a little over a month. And it's great success, y'all. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm a happy guy. Thank you for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters and Buy Me A Coffee supporters who are keeping the dream alive and affording me the ability to do this kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Until next time, be easy, y'all.